Hello and welcome to Tales and Trails and Mini Menon. They were the first great empire builders of the Deccan. But how much do we know about the savvy Satvahanas who built an empire on the riches that they earned because of their trade with Rome? Well, we travelled to the trading post that they lorded over and where the story of the Satvahanas comes together. This pass was an important one 2,200 years ago. Called the Naneg Hut, after the coins that had to be put in as told by merchants in this large jar that still stands, this was an important pit stop for traders bringing their products from the two important ports of the time in Kalyan and Sopara. The money earned was an important source of income for the Satwana Empire that rode on the back of steady commerce with Rome to rise starting the 1st century BCE. Between then and the 2nd century CE, the Satwahanas rose from being petty chieftains to great empire builders. A lot of what we know of the early years of this dynasty comes from Nanighat. We are at the very famous Nanighat cave, which actually tells the story of the Satwahana rulers who controlled this area. Behind me on this wall, at one point, there were eight statues of the big kings or the main kings of the Satwahana dynasty, including the founder and the very famous Queen Naganika, who actually had coins struck on her name. No one has actually seen the full statues of the early Satwahana kings and Queen Naganika, which once stood here. You can only see the feet. The statues were already missing by the time the caves were discovered in 1828. But this cave is full of inscriptions mentioning their names as well as a lot more. What we know about the Satwahanas is that the first king was Simuka. But here in Nanegat, it is his daughter-in-law Naganika who is prominent. She was the wife of Satkarni I and was a daughter of a powerful local chieftain referred to as the Maharati. Her marriage probably helped the Satvahanas expand into this region and control trade routes like this one. She even struck coins in her name along with her husband Satkarni around the 1st century BCE, becoming the earliest queen in India and perhaps the world to do so. The coins were found in Junnar, not far away from Nanighat. Trading connections between the subcontinent and Rome were strong during the Satvahana era. This is the famous ivory Lakshmi, for instance, found in the city of Pompeii that was buried under the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 CE and indicates the robust trade between the two worlds. Roman coins have also been found in great abundance in the Satvahana region. In fact, few dynasties in India were so linked with trade. The Satvahanas, with their capital in ancient Pratishthan, that is today's Python, controlled the famous Dakshinapath or the road leading south to the powerful ports. And the inscription at Nanighat even refers to Satkarni as a lord of the Dakshinapath. The main ports in the North Maharashtra region for trade with Rome were Sopara and Kalyan. And traders would make their way from here through Nanighat to Jannar and then Python. All the major centers took one day by road on foot. The traders, who were mostly Buddhists, also supported monastic settlements and that is why you will find caves all along the route in Kanheri, Bhaja, Karla and Linyadri. The trade was in the possession of or dominated by Buddhist guilds. Guilds, union of Sangha, federation of number of trades. They used to go in a league and they used to trade this in Mansur with Pratiwari Vari, well, the winds depending on that. So Mansur is a spe specific thing or a gift for India. In some of my book I wrote that India is a gift of Mansur and the Satvanas were the first. In 45, what happened? 45 AD, a Hippolus a Greek geographer, he discovered the route of coming monsoon and with that help he used to come and in the month of October he used to back, go back, that is going monsoon, return of monsoon. He was the first to land and then 
the west coast of Maharashtra, Gujarat and Karnataka. It was full with trade and trading activities, among them cotton, silk and other raw things like honey and etc. They were the prominent things use exports of Satwana. That accrued huge profit and which is evident from the 455 caves excavated during the Satwana. Kaneri is the best example of that. All roads at that time led to Python. The Python trade with Rome is also mentioned at length in the Greek or Roman accounts in works such as that of Pliny and the Periplus of the Eritrean Sea. The main items of trade seem to have been the famous Pythony silks that the city is still famous for and cotton from Andhra and local honey. Archaeologist R.S. Murvanchikar has done extensive excavations in the region and tells us what archaeologists found. We excavated and we came across a reused house and after going to a certain depth we came across a pot. <coughs> out of curiosity we opened, cleaned the pot and we got around 300 ivory needles and when it is inspected, searched that during those days these needles were used in the weaving of this silken sari. There are another things, pottery, but it is full of Satavana pottery. The Satvahanas were so closely linked with Rome that the fall of the Roman Empire hurt badly, forcing them to move capital to the east, that is modern-day Amravati. Here too, they patronized temples and art. The famous Amravati sculptures with the scenes from the life of Buddha are among the world's finest examples of narrative sculpture. The most famous king of the Satvahanas was Gautami Putra Satkarni and at their height, the empire was spread across Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and parts of Karnataka and Gujarat. With the decline in the Indo-Roman trade, the Satvahana empire began to crumble and the major ports and cities in the west coast lost their importance. Other feudatories such as the Abhirasa and the Ishvakus established their own independent kingdoms. However, through time, Python remained a religious center. For about 300 years, the Satvahanas remained the lords of the Deccan and this winding path through the Western Ghats acted as a pathway to their riches. A lot more work needs to be done on the Satvahanas and it is really sad that we don't even have a face to the great queen, Naganika, who minted a coin in her name, being the first queen perhaps in the world to do so. Well, that's a wrap on Tales and Trails. Thank you so much for joining us today and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Goodbye.